From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm David Byrd reporting. Leading Russian opposition leader Boris Nemtsov has been shot and killed on a Moscow street. The Interior Ministry says that Nemtsov was shot four times from a passing car as he walk acro walked across a bridge right next to the Kremlin. The official Itar TASS news agency says that President Vladimir Putin was immediately informed about Nemtsov's murder and that the Kremlin will oversee an investigation. A Putin spokesman said the president said it looks like a contract killing that could be a provocation ahead of an opposition march set for Sunday. VOA Moscow correspondent Daniel Scharf says the march will likely become much bigger than planned and says the opposition will probably accuse the Kremlin of being involved in Nemtsov's murder. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko said Friday his military is ready to return its heavy weapons to the front lines in eastern Ukraine, noting that Russian-backed rebels are still violating a ceasefire deal reached earlier this month. Here in Washington, White House spokesman Josh Ernest said the Obama administration is concerned that outside monitors are not being allowed to verify movement of equipment. We certainly want both sides to live up to their agreement, including withdrawing the, their, their forces, but we continue to be concerned uh, that the Russian-backed separatists are being armed and equipped by Russia, uh, and they are preventing uh, the OSCE monitors from verifying that, are, that Russia is living up to their side of the agreement. Mr. Poroshenko said Friday that Ukraine's army stands ready at any moment to stand up to the enemy. Meanwhile, a Ukrainian military spokesman said three government soldiers had been killed and seven wounded in the past day. That follows two consecutive days when no soldiers had died. This is VOA News. The U.S. House of Representatives has rejected a bill to fund the Department of Homeland Security just hours before a deadline when money for the agency runs out. House members voted 224 to 203 to reject the short-term funding bill, which would have provided three more weeks of money for the agency. At issue is a Republican effort to try to overturn President Barack Obama's executive action on immigration, which limits deportations of people in the United States illegally. Funding for the department's employees, which include Border Patrol agents, airport screeners, and members of the U.S. Coast Guard, is set to expire at 5 hours UTC Saturday, unless the House and Senate both pass the same version of a funding bill. If Congress does not take up and pass a further bill, about 30,000 workers could be furloughed. Nearly a quarter of a million others would be working without pay. A prominent Bangladeshi American blogger who wrote against religious fundamentalism was hacked to death in Bangladesh's capital late Thursday. Abhijit Roy, a Bangladesh-born U.S. citizen, and his wife, Rafida Ahmed, were attacked late Thursday after leaving a book fair at Dhaka University. Here in Washington, State Department spokeswoman Jen Psaki said that Roy's murder is an attack on intellectual freedom. He was taken from us in a shocking act of violence. This was not just an attack against a person, but a cowardly assault on the universal principles enshrined in Bangladesh's constitution and the country's proud tradition of free intellectual and religious discourse. The incident was the latest in a series of attacks on secular writers who have supported free-thinking values in predominantly Muslim Bangladesh in recent years. A previously unknown Bangladeshi group has claimed credit for the attack. And the man who played Spock in the 1960s science fiction adventure series Star Trek, Leonard Nimoy, has died. VOA's Adam Phillips reports Nimoy died at age 83. Live long and prosper. 
Leonard Nimoy, who played the half-human, half-Vulcan, pointy-eared Star Trek character Spock, lived long and prospered for nearly five decades as the focus of adoration, even awe, for millions of Trekkies around the world. But the cool, unflappable demeanor Nimoy projected in the series was only one face of a creative life in which he also played film director, singer, controversial art photographer, and memoirist. Born in 1931 to Orthodox Jewish parents from Ukraine, Nimoy died of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in Los Angeles. Adam Phillips, VOA News, New York. For more, please visit our website, voanews.com. I'm David Bird in Washington. That's the latest world news from BOA.